So let's unbox this thing. So I got this in the mail. This little box right here weighs ugh, as much as this box right here. Why? Well, this is a telescope. It's pretty hollow. The other one is clay. So let's take our little cat over here and we're taking an obsidian dagger, which I just happen to have. The latest of Neolithic tools. This could cut faster, but I'm trying to be gentle with the knife. Alright. And we're going to go in from the bottom. Alright. Let's put that open. Oops. Trying to get that to oh, we'll go this way. Tape's really, really being ablated. Anyway. Normally I suggest not to cut towards yourself, but it's easier in this case. Okay. So, what do we get inside? A second box. And what is inside of this? A bottle. Pretty well packaged. Behold. Richie Crichton telescope, not a Richie Crichton, as you'll hear a lot of people say. Crichton is uh, from uh, is a well, it's from a Scottish word, and Crichton is from well, it's French, but it comes from Latin originally, so it's derived from that. So completely different words. So that's the telescope. We'll go through that in a minute. Let's see what else is in here, because I'm pretty sure they didn't just pack a telescope and foam. Probably you were meant to go the other way. The other way has my shipping address on it. And that's something I don't usually put in the video, so. These tubes. These tubes hook onto the back of the telescope, and I'll show you in a minute where, and allow me to extend the focal length, which is very, very useful for astrophotography. Look, big, all metal. There's three of them total. You don't get that with a cheap telescope our little guide. So, expensive, very expensive, absurdly expensive. Okay, little manual, we'll go through this later. Explains how everything works. And did it come from anything else? I feel I'm missing something. Maybe not. All right, well, let's move this out of the way. Now let's look at the unit itself. All right, so this is the tube. As you can see, it's pretty big. So let's cut it out this way. Let's see. All right. And this dagger right here is made from obsidian, and it's what would have been used in the Neolithic period. They hadn't invented scissors yet. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Now, I never pronounce things correctly, although I just made a big fuss about pronouncing the type of telescope correctly. I believe this is called a Los Mandy, and I'm sure I'm saying it wrong and somebody can correct me, but it's a huge mount, which you need for a heavier telescope like this. The mount that I have won't support this, so I can't even use this tonight. I'm getting an Atlas mount, which can hold up to 40 pounds of payload. That's what we need for this. If you get into astrophotography, don't spend your money on a telescope. Spend all of your money on the mount. Telescopes are important, but a good mount in a crappy telescope can take better pictures than a crappy mount in a good telescope. And that's just the way it is. So look at this thing. We'll go into a much more in-depth video about this. This is just a quick one. It has a bar on the top, which I'm going to mount my Orion ST80 to, which is normally my primary telescope. It's going to become my auto guider scope because I have an auto guider. And then, of course, I have this little guy right here, the Orion 50 millimeter guide scope. 
And there's two of these things to hook it to. Two. So let's hook it to this one. Wow. See, it's those little extra things that I like. Two of these things. So I can put a low-powered finder scope to find the area. Higher-powered finder scope to get really close in. And then the big boy right here. And then I can use my guide scope if I want to to make sure I keep everything straight up as nice as possible. <coughs> Let's pull the front off. I was told that this didn't stay on too well, and I can already feel that that's true. Every single thing that you ever buy has like something that's not perfect. This is the not perfect, and this is honestly what I would prefer to be not perfect, because this isn't that big of a deal. I can just hook this on with something. As you can see, the light goes in and bounces off a primary parabolic mirror. That's the objective. Bounces back and hits this guy right here. This is the secondary mirror. So light goes in, hits the mirror here, bounces back, hits the mirror here, and then flies down the middle. There aren't any mirror or any lenses inside of this design. No lenses means that I don't have to worry about chromatic aberration, which is when red, blue, and green don't quite go on the exact same dot. They don't focus on the same dot. So your pictures can sometimes have weird distortions. If you looked at any of my photos, you'll see them. I'm always doing everything I can to stop them. Don't have to worry about that anymore. This is an astrograph, which means it has light baffles all the way down. It means it was designed explicitly for astrophotography. Look at this thing, light baffles all the way down at nice, heavy metal construction. Everything's metal. I like metal. I don't like plastic in my telescopes. Look at this focuser, the Crawford focuser, I think it's called for Crawford. Yeah, see, I made a big fuss about, like, you know, you call this by the right telescope name, you know, Richie Cretin, and then I'll mispronounce everything else. Yeah, whatever, at least I'm a hypocrite, a consistent hypocrite. So this guy is a focuser, and then this is a 10 times focuser. You ever tried to focus? and like you're jerking all over the place and you're like trying to get it exactly right, it's difficult, you have a cheap telescope. This guy right here allows that super fine focus. Look at this big two inch adapter for big honking, uh, big honking eyepieces. Not these little, not these little two and a half, or uh, 1.25 inches. No, 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 size matters with telescopes and such. The two inch is better. Um, this will unscrew this whole focuser and I can add these in place. So I pull this off, stick this on, put this on, and that will allow me to get the amount of back focus that I need to hook my camera up to it. So this is a Rebel T5 that I use. Not the best camera in the world, but it works perfectly great for what I'm doing. Oh, look at this crazy thing. And then um, somewhere in here you adjust this. So here we go. Turn that, and then you just adjust this to where you want it to be. Tighten it right back. See, look at that. Look at that. Little, it has little, little, little numbers on it to show it's going nice, heavy metal. Everything here is metal. That's what I like. Brass compression screen, sp uh, springs. That's what I like. High quality. So with this and with the Atlas mount, astrophotography would be mine. Um, I should probably post some astro photos I've already taken with my lesser scope in the end of this video so that you can see that I actually have done astrophotography. This is just better. Oh. And let me show you what the guide scope looks like. All right, so we're good to go here. We have a short kind of like wide angle focuser thing. I can see a huge constellation with this goofy thing. Um, it'll, get, it'll get me in the ballpark. Then I have this nicer 50 by 162, so 50 by 162 millimeter, which will be nice all glass, actual real legit optics. Um, this little tiny finder scope is better than a lot of people's starter scopes. With a nice wide angle on it, this will let me get in a nice and narrow find what I'm looking for. And then I have a nicer eyepiece from here. This is not, you know, a Teleview $600 eyepiece, mind you, but it's still a good one. It uh, uh, has an 82 degree field of view, this guy right here, and it's, a, I think it's a 15 or 20 or something like that millimeter. And, and it's a 1.25, but I don't have any twos, two inch so eyepieces. I haven't put the, I haven't screwed these on yet. I actually just, I haven't like done any of this yet, but um, and basically, this eyepiece, you have a auto guider piece right here. This is going to hook on top like this. And this right here is what looks at the stars and keeps me aligned. It sends continuous data to a laptop, which sends the correction data to the mount to keep it always on target. Stay on target. Stay on target. If you remember the Star Wars quote, loosen up. Stay on target. Anyway, so when I am done setting this all up, it will look something like this. More or less. And I could technically add another eyepiece on top, uh, not eyepiece, another finder scope on top of here. <laughs> then I would have an, another one, I guess. I don't know. So, you get the idea. I am all Orion. 
and I am doing pretty well. Oh, this is Orion. Uh, that's Orion. This is Orion. This is Orion. All of it's Orion except for that, which is Celestron. Sorry, Orion. Um, even that's Orion. It's all Orion. So, and no, they didn't, they didn't pay me to say this. Wish they paid me. If they want to, they can proactively pay me to say it. Just send me money, but they, they won't do that. So, anyway, um, this is the un initial unboxing for this guy right here. Oh my god, it's so heavy. I love this thing. It's absurdly heavy. It's, it's like 30 pounds. Isn't that wonderful? That's what you want. You want heavy. Actually, you want really light. That's why people buy carbon fiber tubes. But what I mean by heavy is that I mean that this isn't a kid's scope. It's an actual scope. This guy is built for astrophotography. We'll see what it can do. Two days from now, four, no, four days from now, the mount shows up. 